Hello, members, one and all of the Salivation Nation. Well, I just got back from a meeting in downtown Washington, D.C. with a couple of buddies here at the International Monetary Fund. I didn't attend the other two days. I just went on today, October the 15th, because, um, you know, it's, it was all the buzz and all the rage from Jim Rickards about some big shenanigans going on there. But to be honest with you, it was so boring, I just fell asleep. So, uh, actually, I didn't really go, but... And let's see what's going on here with this particular meeting here. It's uh, it's quite interesting indeed to see what could have came out of this. Uh, do we want to hear about some of these uh, statements from uh, from what happened at least up until the 14th? Well, maybe some of them. We'll take a look and see. I'm not sure that we're that interested in uh, the governor of the Bank of Estonia, but I know we are interested in... Uh, uh, the president of European Central Bank. Maybe that sounds like it might be something to be interesting to check out. And uh, maybe the the India that represents Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, and Sri Lanka. Uh, but let's see here. Any of these others here? Mnuchin, Stephen Mnuchin, Treasury of the United States. Man, that be interesting to take a look at here. Oh, but let's say the one I'm really interested in here is the statement by china the governor of the bank of china so let's take a look at some of these so here is the um, european central bank statement here let's see here ongoing recovery ongoing recovery all kinds of things going on here underlying inflation is expected to rise gradually over the median term Supported by our monetary policy measures, anything in here that's good, blah, 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 boilerplate stuff. Nothing in here about takeover of the dollar as being the highest world reserve currency here. The current political and economic momentum in Europe also provides an opportunity to strengthen our economic and monetary union. Hmm, well, there's Brexit, you've got... Uh, um, the going ons there in Barcelona right now in Catalonia. Let's see here. Well, that's it. The current, uh, let's see, fiscal will be the foundation for a stable, flourishing, resilient euro area and economy. No big news there, at least that I can see. Let's see what India has to say here. Okay, economy, world leaders, the G20 summit, the role of architecture of global cooperation, strong quota base and adequately resourced IMF is necessary to strengthen the international financial architecture and the global financial safety net. Hmm, shared commitment on completing the 15th general review of quotas, including realignment of the quota formula. Hmm, that might be interesting. The realignment of the quota formula, no later than the 2019 annual meetings. Increased interconnectedness and complexity of financial markets ordained. The size of the fund is increased size ability to mitigate the impact of crisis effectively. This calls for significant realignment of members' quota shares, especially in favor of EMDs, E's, whose under uh, representation has increased by 5 percentage point compared to previous calculations. So, sounds like they're complaining about underrepresentation for the formulas, which means their influence is not as much. So, maybe Jim Rickards is on to something. Uh, we welcome the progress made by the fund in revamping its toolkit to facilitate meaningful and timely lending and policy support to the membership's needs. We call on the IMF to encourage rebalancing of the global economy while drawing attention to the adverse implications or sp of spillovers. We welcome the IMF's unambiguous and strong voice in support of fair rules based off multilateral trading system. Hmm, okay. And then it talks about the individual developments of the constituencies here. Bhutan, India, financial sector, fiscal reforms, we want fiscal rectitude. Yes, that's what is needed here, it sounds like, that they want. So there you have it. I think this is kind of a hint of positioning for some things. I know that they want more influence 
uh, and the world reserve currencies for sure is my guess. So there you have it for India. Let's take a look here. Steve Mnuchin, Secretary of the Treasury of the United States. The U.S. expansion continued through 2018 while the economy has grown since global financial crisis. Recovery has proved disappointing on many fronts and uh, achieving stronger growth. And uh, there's the IMS recent external sector reports. Global rebalancing is far from complete and sustained global excess and balances continue to pose risk for the global system. The IMF does and should play a critical role in advising, informing, and helping member countries achieve global economic stability and stronger economic growth. In this bilateral and multilateral surveillance role, the IMF must be more forceful advocate for strong, sustainable, and balanced growth across the membership. This will require the IMF to produce robust analysis and make clear policy recommendations, in particular highlighting ways that surplus and deficit countries must adjust and reduce imbalances. Okay. Institution of providing programs. I'm reading this for the first time as you're reading it. If you guys see anything in here that jumps out at you, post it in the comment section below. I'll just cap off the bottom part. The IMF plays an important role in the international monetary system through the promotion of economic stability and global growth. To best execute this role, the IMF must deliver in its core mandate by encouraging stable exchange rates that reflect underlying economic fundamentals, promoting sound public financial management in a market-oriented regulatory framework, and pressing for independent central banks to pursue transparent monetary policy. So pressing for independent central banks. Uh, very good. Okay. So that's good. Okay. Now let's take a look at China. Probably what everybody's been looking for here. I know Small Gold has mentioned that, you know, the nothing about in here about the uh, a gold back one for sure. So let's see what they talk about here. Oh, let's see here. Let's just kind of read through this. This is only a few pages here. Since our last meeting in the spring, the global recovery has continued to strengthen. The macroeconomic situation in major developed and emerging market economies has broadly improved, but the downside risk cannot be ignored. With policy support and cyclical pickup, domestic demand in major developed economies such as the United States, European countries, and Japan has become more buoyant and market confidence has been bolstered. Global trade growth has accelerated and the financial conditions have remained accommodative. With improved external environment, Emerging markets and developing countries have seen their growth gradually gaining momentum. The world economy still faces long-term challenges such as low productivity growth, the aging population, and widening income gaps, and the outlook tilted to the downside of the median turn. At the same time, more rapid normalization of monetary policy in some developed economies could lead to another round of capital flow reversal and cross-border capital flows affecting vulnerable countries that have been plagued by over-leveraging and currency mismatches. There we go. There's our first first uh, talk of the uh, mismatches between the currencies and complaints here. In addition, geopolitical risk, the tendency of inward-looking policies and possible fiscal policy adjustments have all created uncertainties in major developed countries. In this context, all parties need to work together to maintain the momentum of the recent recovery through monetary and fiscal measures, as well as structural reforms in order to improve the medium-term prospects for growth. It will be necessary to develop the economies to pursue monetary and fiscal policy mix to improve the structure of their spending and revenue, ensure medium-term debt sustainability, provide effective fiscal support for growth, and gradually reduce the over-reliance on accommodative monetary policy. Let's see here. And it goes on to talk about economic and financial developments in China. And um, 
Looking forward, the Chinese government will continue to maintain the stability and continuity of its macroeconomic policies. This year, it has been emphasized that monetary policy should be prudent and neutral. More attention should be paid to balancing between maintaining steady growth on one hand and avoiding the buildup of a systematic risk through deleveraging, preventing, and controlling asset bubbles on the other. Full range of monetary policy tools will continue to be used to keep liquidity broadly stable, facilitate the formation of an appropriate level of market interest rates, improve the transmission channel to support the flow of financial resources to the real economy. China will further improve its macro prudential policy framework and enhance its macro prudential management of systematic risk. Fiscal policy will be pursued in a more active and effective manner with a deficit in 2017 to be maintained at 3% of GDP, but the absolute amount to be increased by 200 billion won over the last year. In addition, the Chinese government will continue to promote structural reforms, especially on the supply side, in order to replace old economic drivers with new ones to achieve structural optimization of upgrading its economy. Uh, let's see here. Anything else that stands out? IMF reforms. The IMF should further strengthen its surveillance and policy advice, advocate multilateralism and global economic cooperation and integration, facilitate international policy coordination, and mitigate the downside risk to global growth. Priorities should be given to strengthening surveillance on macroeconomic and financial policy of, of its member countries. It should comprehensively analyze the, the current policy uncertainties in and possible spillover effects from the major economies. Capital flows and microfinancial risks should be closely monitored with advice for improving macro prudential management and mitigating these risks and addressing key obstacles to improving potential growth in developed countries, especially in the areas of labor force participation, wage growth, aging population, and labor productivity. The IMF is encouraged to work with international organizations in relevant fields to enhance its analysis and advise on structural reforms. We support an active role for the IMF in multilateral microeconomic policy coordination, its continued commitment to the policies of globalization and multilateralism, and its effort in, in assisting the sustained and all-around recovery for global trade and investment. Interesting. The IMF should continue to push ahead with quota and governance reforms, to ensure a quota base and adequately resourced institution, and it should pay a central role in global financial safety net, the world reserve currencies. We support the IMF's effort to in intensify cooperation with the regional financial arrangements and to further enhance the effectiveness of its lending facilities. In order to play a central role in the global financial safety net, the IMF needs to fundamentally ensure the adequacy of its resources. And the key to promote quota reform, we call on all parties to demonstrate the spirit of cooperation and ensure the 15th general review of quotas is completed within a timetable established by the consensus of its membership so as to narrow the gap in quotas and improve the quota structure, reduce out of lineness, and increase the representative dynamic emerging market and developing economies. To me, that tells me that they are wanting to have a bigger role, and they want the BRICS nation, because we saw India basically echo the same sentiments. It's a very, very interesting indeed. More boilerplate stuff here that talks about that. Uh, the IMF should continue to push for the reform of the international monetary system. Uh, we support continuing the study on expanding the use of the SDR to enhance the resilience of the international monetary system. We expect the IMF to focus its efforts on addressing the inherent weakness of the existing inter um, international monetary system. We call on all parties to continue to improve the sovereign debt infrastructure framework, strengthen coordination between debtors and creditors, and promote the use of enhanced contractual term. It's a very interesting indeed. Uh, so post your thoughts below on this boring uh, meeting that took place, and we haven't heard anything about what today's meeting was about. But my guess is they are trying to position to get a larger role for the uh, for the currencies, for the IMF. So I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for watching and encourage you to please rate, comment, and subscribe.